Tate Reeves was first elected to public office in 2003. He was the youngest state treasurer in America and the very first Republican to hold that office in the state of Mississippi. He's now the 65th governor of Mississippi. He just signed the largest tax cut in that state's history into law. And he says this comes as President Joe Biden and his administration are fundamentally out of touch with reality as their policies continue to hurt everyday Americans like you. Tate Reeves is fighting back. I want you to welcome to the show a wonderful governor, somebody who is setting a high standard for how it ought to be done. Please welcome Governor Tate Reeves of Mississippi. <laughs> governor, great having you here. Well, thank you, Governor. Great to be on today. I want to uh, talk about the fact that your state very well may be the linchpin of the Supreme Court decision that will finally reverse, after all these many years, the hideous decision that abortion is some kind of a federal right. And that, that is a piece of legislation that happened in Mississippi, got challenged in the court. It's now bubbled all the way to the Supreme Court. What's at stake here? So what's at stake is literally saving babies' lives. And it's, it's a fascinating time uh, to be governor of the state that, whose case is there. But, but Governor, I will tell you, I was Lieutenant Governor and President of the Senate when we passed this particular bill. Uh, giving us this opportunity to get before uh, the Supreme Court and, and asking them uh, at a minimum to uphold our law, uh, but also to overturn Roe, because if you read the United States Constitution, there is no right to an abortion in our Constitution. In fact, there is nothing in our Constitution that prevents states like Mississippi uh, and others from uh, providing restrictions on abortions. Um, and we're just very hopeful that that draft opinion that was floated, which is a another topic in and of itself, but we're just very hopeful and we pray every day that that actually uh, is where five of the nine justices land on our case. It's got to make you feel very, very fulfilled knowing that a case that started in your state that you had a hand in and that you've continued even as becoming governor, pushing for it to go to the Supreme Court, that this could be what many of us would say would be the moment to finally bring some justice to this issue. Um, you know, I, I just think it's historic and, and you have to feel good and the people of Mississippi who are very pro-life overall, have to feel good that, uh, that you're serving in this, in this capacity. And I mean, we're praying hard that this would come about. Well, that, that is exactly right. We are praying hard and, and we're hopeful. And, and we, every, every day since the oral arguments were made before the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, we listened to the questions that were asked. We knew that there were uh, a majority of, of justices that, that could ha make a simple reading of the Constitution and recognize that there is no guaranteed right to an abortion. There is no guaranteed right to kill another uh, American being in our U.S. Constitution. And so we were hopeful then. We became even more hopeful when the, when the leaked draft opinion occurred, which, by the way, is in and of itself a, an internal attack on uh, the institution that is the Supreme Court. But we've become even more hopeful, uh, but it is just a draft opinion at this time. And so we don't, we don't want to get too far out in front other than to pray and just pray that, it, that a majority of those justices um, stick with their guns, are not intimidated, uh, by the far left, because you've seen what's happened in Washington, oh. D.C. The picketing outside their homes, the just really the craziness uh, of the far left on, on this issue and so many others, um, we, we just pray. You were one of the uh, governors who was heralded for your handling of the COVID issue. Uh, you didn't lock everybody down and tell them where they could go or not go. Republican governors had a very different approach than many of the Democrat governors. But you in particular, I think... Uh, really came through as a real leader in saying, look, we're going to make these decisions at the local level. Just share with us the process that you had to go through as a governor. A lot of pressure coming down from the federal government for you to bend and shut down churches and all sorts of things. How'd you handle that? Well, there's no doubt that there was a, there was a lot of pressure from, from the top down, if you will, from the, the federal government. Uh, there was also a lot of pressure from local governments and, and particularly the Democrat elected officials who wanted uh, us to make those uh, tough decisions to, to do things that just didn't make sense. And it really, when you think about the, the way in which we approached COVID uh, from a, a conservative governance standpoint, it really highlights the differences between the, the way Democrats believe and the way Republicans believe. Democrats believe in centralized decision-making. 
They believe that all decisions are better if they come from Washington, D.C. We, on the other hand, as conservatives, believe that it's the individual that has the right to make decisions based upon what's best for them and their families. And so as we approached it, we tried to uh, recognize the, the need for, for freedom, uh, for opportunity. We tried to provide information to every single Mississippian. Um, we tried to point them in the right direction so that they could get the facts. And we encouraged them to talk to uh, their doctors, to talk to their neighbors. But at the end of the day, we believe in personal responsibility and people have to step up and make decisions based upon what is in their best interest. I, as a governor, uh, I don't know the individual scenarios of each and every family across Mississippi. Uh, my job is to provide information, recognize that we've got to protect lives, but also we have to protect livelihoods. Um, and that's the approach that we took every single day. And, and I'll tell you, um, the reality is my family's a, uh, in a small business. My dad started his business in the early 1970s um, and has been in business every day. And I guarantee you he went to work today and will go to work tomorrow and probably and, and yesterday as well. But having that background coming from um, someone who knows what it's like to sign the front of a paycheck, knowing what it's like, that when you think about this definition of an essential business, the reality is every small business is essential. And the reason, and the reason it's essential is because every employee depends on it to provide food for their family and, um, and, and shelter for their family. And so that's the approach that we took. And what you see now here, uh, some... Uh, two and a half years later, is the dichotomy, the difference between how well Republican-led states are doing economically and how poorly Democrat-led states are doing economically. I think it shows you um, very clearly uh, that we were making the right decisions, even though uh, those far-left outlets like the uh, the New York Times and the Washington Post didn't necessarily like it the way we were doing it. You know, I, I have a special place in my heart for obvious reasons. I think governors are on the forefront of, of really leadership of the country. Nothing happens in Washington, virtually nothing. They make a lot of speeches, but very few decisions. You, on the other hand, leading a state, you have to balance your budget. You have to make things work. And a lot of people may not fully understand that. Look at the landscape now. Or entering into an election season, what do you think will happen in the 2022 elections in the Congress, the Senate, the governorships? What happens this year? Are the people sort of saying, maybe this left-wing leadership is not working? Oh, I, I don't think there's any doubt that uh, across the country, uh, there is buyer's remorse uh, from the voters, uh, specifically uh, those uh, voters in the middle, even those that maybe are left-leaning on certain issues, recognize that the mistakes that were made in the 2020 election, uh, electing a Democrat-controlled House and a Democrat-controlled Senate and uh, with this particular president in the White House, um, it, it has led to uh, far-left policies that hurt everyday Mississippians and everyday Americans. When you think about uh, the, the fact that uh, every single announcement that the president makes with respect to the oil and gas industry is an attempt to constrain supply. When you constrain supply with a fixed level of demand, guess what happens? Prices go up. We're in a state like Mississippi, we're in a state like Tennessee and Arkansas, where people drive a long way to work every single day. Doubling the price of gasoline makes it harder for them to put food on their table. And oh, by the way, not only does it make it harder simply because they're paying more at the pump, they're also, when they get to the grocery store to put food on their table, they're paying more for bread and milk because the cost to move goods and services around the country are going up. And this inflation is really hurting everyday Americans. And I think there's going to be a major backlash against the far left Democrat Party because of it. Well, let's hope so. And I tell you what I hope, that more states will elect governors like Tate Reeves, uh, you have been an exemplary governor, and I'm just so very grateful for the leadership you've shown, not just through COVID, but tax cuts. You've managed the state effectively and resourcefully, and it's just an honor to have you here. And I think all of our audience appreciates being able to see good government in action, which is exactly what they see when they well, see Tate you. Reeves from Mississippi. Thank you. Now, for our audience, we'd love you to keep up with Governor Reeves heading to Huckabee.tv. We'll have all his links so that you can find out more about what he's getting done in Mississippi. And I say that is the guy next door over in Arkansas. <laughs> so it's, 
It's all I can do to really commend him for doing the great job he's doing, but he's doing it, and I'm grateful for it.